Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's Adam Hamlet Asman for Somala National Television. I'm here today with the Cardiff University and Golis University research teams regarding the informal economy of Somaliland and research led by Cardiff University regarding this. I'm here today with Professor Eid of Cardiff University, Dr. Peter Mackey of Cardiff University and Professor Saeed of Golis University. Um, I'd like to start initially with Professor Eid. Um, Professor Eid, if you could perhaps provide us with an insight into um, the role of the diaspora um, regarding the information that would come out um, regarding this, this particular piece. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Adam, and uh, we are very pleased you know, that you arranged this interview. Uh, and um, this research uh, we have done you know, in last August, as you know, and uh, now the product is here. Uh, the question you're asking me, yes, you know, yes, we know the diaspora, you know, uh, contributes the development of this country. And uh, there is a report done by, you know, the World Bank, 2012, and, uh, you know, that report showing, you know, the, that the diaspora contributes, I, you know, uh, about 600 million a, a year, or up to 800 million a year, and we know that, all the development going on. This research is informal yeah, economy, and uh, in that respect, you know, the way the diaspora could help is through, you know, helping the local authorities, working, uh, you know, with the international NGOs, and raising some funds. And uh, first, they have to get, you know, the report. Uh, also, there is a, you know, as we know, the um, uh, diaspora agency, uh, you know, we will give, you know, that report how they can contribute. Therefore, you know, we will disseminate that. And we have the, also the Somaliland Societies in Europe. They know about this report because I'm involved in that uh, organization. Uh, I was in the, you know, the chair for about five years before. And, uh, and I told them, you know, this uh, research is going on. And uh, therefore, we will disseminate. And wherever they can contribute, uh, you know, is very welcome, even if they can raise something, because we have to implement the recommendations of this, and there will be a need of source. You know, therefore, I will campaign in that respect as well, you know, how we can, you know, make, uh, you know, uh, raise some funding to help the implementation of this report. Fantastic. Um, Dr. Peter Mackey, um, this is part of uh, a wider uh, research program. Um, if you could perhaps highlight um, the role of Hargeisa and perhaps touch upon um, how that reflects um, with other areas of the research as well for us, please. So we've, um, in this study, we've got four cities included, as you know, Adam. So we've got uh, Karachi, we've got Kathmandu, we've got Cairo and Hargeisa. Hargeisa is the first city that we've we've been to. We've we have conducted the research in in Nepal, uh, and reflecting on those findings, Hargeisa has a um, has a unique position uh, in in that the conflict was was so devastating. So in, in eighty eight, it was utter devastation. So livelihoods were lost almost entirely. And what we've found that's particularly unique to Hargeisa is how important the informal economy was at that time after the conflict when people returned particularly for women to find employment and and the informal economy was absolutely key in a way that we're not really finding yet in the other cities um, but also that the informal economy uh, played a role in replacing services so providing uh, fuel uh, access to water the informal economy was key in that and so if you're providing all those services you're providing livelihoods that means that there's opportunities for people that also then has a contribution to peace because people are settled, more secure. So it's a really interesting finding that humanitarian aid policy has never recognised. So we'll be taking those messages up to, to UN Habitat and others. And then, of course, we've got the findings about the informal economy today. Uh, and just to touch on that a, a little bit, if I may, what we found in the, the study, and so this is in a 50-page uh, a report that we've been disseminating um, over these last few days and is available online, is that the, the informal economy, there's a huge opportunity for workers to get more organised, so to associate both at the grassroots level but also together 
so the transport workers to work together with the fruit and veg sellers to work together with the construction workers in umbrella organizations in order to lobby uh, uh, and advocate with government for appropriate services etc so that's one thing is to get better organized uh, and sonsaf have agreed to support that process we also then secondly um, have a need for some infrastructure for the informal economy workers uh, and perhaps most significantly at the moment, there's almost no recognition of the informal economy in government, both national and local level policy. And we're working hard with both the planning ministry, the Ministry of Trade, um, the Vice President's Office and others to, to ensure that there is a policy and there's policy recognition of how important the informal economy is. It's 80% of jobs. It is the economy. But there's such great potential here in, in Hargeisa and, and in wider Somaliland to really support this informal economy so that they can make the contribution to the wider national economy and help in that process of development. Thank you. Thanks very much. And finally, um, Professor Saeed, um, if you could perhaps give us a, 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 an idea into um, Golis University's role in this, um, I, I suppose, as a, as, as a local partner mm -hmm. and, and, and how you'll be um, taking this forward for us, please. Very good. First of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Adam and, you know, the Somaliland National TV for uh, giving us the opportunity to explain this novel program, uh, the impact of informal economy to the development of Somaliland. Uh, our role actually was uh, collecting the data for the research. But it was not only that, uh, you know when uh, the interviews or the uh, questionnaires were being filled, uh, sometimes the informal economy uh, participants did not understand actually some of the questions. It was written in English, so uh, students were uh, translating it, trying to get the right answer, uh, trying to persuade so that we will get a, a relevant, you know, a question, and the research will be more reliable, more reliable. So it was uh, interviews, uh, questionnaires, you know, and uh, explaining more. Uh, we, we did it in, this, in these two ways, interview yeah. and then the questionnaire. Yeah. So two ways we have conducted the uh, interview, uh, I mean uh, the research, that made it more reliable. Uh, the, and the other thing we are so pleased is the impact that this will re, this research will have on the informal economy, because that's a very important sector of our society, and 80 percent, almost 80 percent of the people are employed at that level. Now, what have, what we have found is that Somaliland is in a very good uh, situation. Uh, we actually the government. Uh, although there's not, they are not recognized in, uh, within our budget or within our five-year plan, but now we are planning, you know, that this will go into the five-year plan, and the government will sometimes, perhaps maybe in the future, will add into the budget. Uh, this will transform the whole country. Uh, the reason, one, one thing, one very important thing that this, this transformation will bring is, for example, if they organize themselves in these different sub-sectors, transportation, those who are selling uh, fruits and vegetables, those who are selling uh, 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 milk, uh, bus people, uh, if they organize themselves, perhaps that can actually replace tribalism because people who are in the same interest will work for their interest. And in, in, in the Horn of Africa, tribalism is really killing us. So I think this will bring other issues that will help uh, this country to get transformed. This is a novel project, and we are very pleased to play an important role in this program. Thank you very much, um, the research team, um, Professor Eid, Dr. Mackey, and uh, Professor Saeed. Um, my name is Adam Hamlisman. This is Somaliland National Television. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.